since we're doing rustic quilts, lodge quilts, and camp quilts today, I have on my camouflage outfit and my vest. And look, it even has a place to put your thread tails. Came equipped that way. I'm working on a little project today that's really cute. It's a little flannel project designed by Debbie Field. First of all, I'm going to go around these little paw prints that I cut out and put on here. And they are just, they're just sitting here. I didn't fuse them on, and I'm just going to stitch right around them like that, around the edge, about an eighth of an inch in. And then I'm going to make a little paw, little pad where the foot goes, and I'm going to go around that a couple of times. I'm also, now that I've got it down, I'm going to go around the foot about three times to really nail it down for me. Then I'll go into my automatic mode and I'll just wind out here like this and just go around these little claws, this little bear print, like this. And just move over to the next one and go around it like this. You can do this with uh, wool or felt. This just happens to be black batting that I cut it out of. Okay, that's nailed down. And while I have the black thread on, I'm going to come down here to the tree and you can see the tree is the same way. I've just, I've just put it there. It's not even fused on. And I'm going to do a blanket stitch on the trunk of the tree. So as I come along like this, I'll just take a little stitch up. So I go down and then go up about three stitches and over and up three stitches like that. And I could just get on top of the um, tree. Let's see if I can get my foot over there on top of the tree and just outline that like that. I'm going to come back with green and put some of the um, lines into the tree. This will get me down to the trunk to the bottom trunk. There we go. Once you get into a rhythm of doing this blanket stitch, it goes really fast. You want to go back on top of where you were so you don't get a V look. You get right on top of the same stitching. And again, I'll come over here and get on top of this green. And just outline it. It would probably be easier if it was fused down, but I like that ragged look, and I just didn't have time to, to fuse it down. So I want you to know that you don't have to have everything fused down. And if you get a wild hair idea, you just want to place something on your machine and stitch it down, you can do it. You can do it. Okay. Now I'm going to change to a gold thread so I can do some of the wind in here and the eagle and um, finish some of my thread painting here, so I'll be right back. I've changed now to a gold jean stitch, which is a heavier thread. It's really like a 90 tex, and I have one letter left to do on my lettering here. So I'm going to outline it. It's an E. Get that going, and then I can cut my thread there. That, and then in order to thread paint inside of that, I'm going to go back and forth like this with straight lines, just back and forth to fill all of that in. It looks really neat when you get finished. Long lines where it's long and the short lines where it's short. And keep them really close together so you fill in a lot of the uh, letter. You want to really put the color down there. And then when you finish going inside and putting all that thread on the inside, then we're going to go back around the outside. And that cleans up the lines if you have any um, little lines that you've kind of gone out, you know, when you were doing your straight lines, if you've gone out of lines a little bit. That just cleans it right up, okay? So there is our lettering completed. Anytime you want to do 
you know you could use a stencil for this kind of lettering I just did it freehand it's not hard to do this kind of lettering or you could just write and do it now I'm going to do some wind through here I kind of did some uh, mountain looking uh, designs down through here and I thought um, with this eagle here it would be fun to just have some uh, wind so I'm just going to come along like this kind of do a curl here like this so it looks like it's just oh here we go wind beneath my wings do another little swirl here and then I'll just go back and echo it like this and again, I don't want a lot of really heavy quilting through here. I just want it to um, give the feeling that I that you know it's kind of swirling around like that. Swirl over here, and then I can take off from that while I'm here. I'll come into the eagle, and I want to put in some wings. So I'm just going to kind of come in here like this with the point. I've already stitched around the eagle. And you can see it is kind of rusty there. I just left the edges raw. Because I, I, again, I just flopped him down and stitched on it, you know. As we come out here in the tail, let's come out with some, some feathers in the tail. Come over here and do some more wings. Feathers on the wings here. There we go. And this jean stitch, this little heavier uh, thread, really shows up a little bit better. There we go. That's the effect that I wanted in that area. So I have one more thread change. I want to show you the uh, tree, and then we're going to do a pattern from behind the machine. So I'll be right back. I've changed to the green thread, and I'm going to put some um, kind of, you know, the pine cone effect in the tree. So I'm going to start at the bottom of it. I'll come up the tree like this and then just nail it down with these. It's kind of a curve, but pointed at the end. And reach out into all those little areas of the tree where it comes out a little bit further on the other side. So this is on to stay now. You really can nail this down so easy. And I like that frayed effect, especially on a quilt like this. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to go around to the back of the machine and with the laser light, we're going to set a tree pattern in this area right here where we have the four patch. I'm going to move my machine here to the center and adjust my laser light. I have the pattern that I have put onto an eighth inch plexiglass and it has score lines on it so I can place my pattern exactly square. And then I will just adjust the pattern where I think it goes, like that, that looks good. And then I'll go out to each corner following my score lines to make sure that I'm going to be in the corner of this on each of these areas. Okay, so you can see where my needle is there and you can see that the laser light is right there on the corner. So I feel really confident that I'm okay there. I don't want to start right in the middle, so I'm going to start right here on the straight line and I will bring up my thread like that and I'll cut that in a minute. First of all, I'm going to take some stitches here and then I'll just follow this pattern around. You could go a lot slower. You just want to make sure that when you go into those points on the um, on the tree that you you pause when you go into the point. It'll take you just a few minutes to go around it.
point, 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 point. Sometimes I say that to myself so that I, I make sure that I have a nice sharp point. If you round that off, it just doesn't look like a tree. And the last one. If you go out of line a little bit, don't worry. You know, it's just a tree. It's going to look really good. It's going to look like a tree, even if you go out of line. In the center, the little root pattern, you'll go over twice. There we go, and there we have our tree pattern. And our little lodge quilt is complete.